This is Andy Perua for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm joined by the machine, Anthony Fowler over Zoom. Anthony, Happy New Year. Uh, I know it's probably a little late, but it's the first time I've had a chance to say it to you. So I hope you could enjoy it and the festive period as best as what you could, mate. Did you get up too much? You know what, mate? I, was, I got told I was fighting in January, so we're half roomy Christmas and New Year. So I was training, training Christmas Day the law, and I obviously got the bad news when um, that announcement, but... I'm fighting February the 20th now, so we're not too bad and I'm in, I'm in great shape already. I mean, how tough a kind of in a bit of pill is that to swallow? We know boxing was su- suspended or postponed through January. For yourself and for other fighters who would have been preparing for a January day, you would have sacrificed Christmas. How difficult was it to kind of take that in, knowing that in the end it was all for nothing? Yeah, I was, I was a bit pissed off, but on the same man, I come back to camp and I feel great. Where if you were there, I wouldn't have got told and I would have been eating a bit of crap on Christmas and stuff and drinking. I wouldn't have been as fit as I am now. So look at the positives, not the negatives in life. I try and be positive at all times. And I, I got a lot of good spar over Christmas and I, I learned a lot and I, I built some weight on my stamina. One sec, sorry about low battery. Sorry, low battery, mate. Um, and yeah, I uh, just got to crack on. I'm, here and I'm only fighting, I think it's four weeks after. So It'll be before knowing. Let's get into that, Anthony. He fought in Jorge Fortier on February 20th. What do you know about him? Um, I, I know he's ranked 15th in the world with the IBF. He boxed on the Canelo, Kovalev, Kovalev on the card into the Russian, who was 16 and 0, and he lost on points over 12. So he, he's an experienced guy. I watched him on YouTube. He looks a bit like slick and a little bit awkward and a little bit quick. So it's a, it's a good, at this stage of my career, to go fight. I'm fine. He's a, Good experienced fighter. He's been in the ring with top lads. He boxed that Russian he box. I think he's number one with the IBF. So he, he went 12 rounds at him recently. So it's a, it's a good fight. What should we expect to see from yourself, Anthony? You, know, you impressed a lot of people with your performance against Adam Harper back at fight camp. You've had even more time to continue to work with Shane since a pair of you linked up. What should we expect to see from you come fight night? I think more of the same from building my last fight. I was a lot more loose, a lot more snappy with my shots, a lot more efficient. And again, I want to be a bit more again. I want to, this, this probably could be all the distance this fight, so I need to be controlled, efficient with my energy, picking my shots nice and just to show them that I'm getting more experience because this year I want to see what I'm capable of. I want to be in these big fights and to do that, I need to beat this fella. What have you learned about yourself throughout your professional career now? And you've been a pro for what three four years now well, four years i believe yeah, um, yeah fourth year so what have you learned during the journey so far just it's a, it's a different game for damages it took me a, a little bit longer to adapt and some of my teammates and stuff but the first off like i've crossed that bridge now first off, i'm a 12 round fighter now at the start i was a bit too guns blazing so i'm not going out but you learn as you go up to levels you can't do that you gotta be more you gotta be clever you keep using the word efficient with your energy. It's a 12 round fight, you can't go in there and knock them out like I was doing. And my first nine fights, obviously, I blasted for everyone easy enough. And then when I, when I lost, I had to reassess and go back to the drawing board. And I believe, I believe I'm, I'm supposed to fight it now as what I was. You lost for Gerald, and I'm going to prove that in the rematch, hopefully, if it comes off. Let's touch on that. Obviously, everybody's kind of, we, we know you want that Scott's Fitch Gerald rematch, but nobody quite knows what's going on with Scott at the minute. What kind of knowledge on Scott's situation do you have? Do you anticipate seeing him back in the ring soon? Or um, I thought he would have been boxing that, on that announcement that, I, that we ever called on. So I'm not sure why he never, but I got told he was fighting in February. And I see, I see one of his coaches saying, saying that, he, that he was on Twitter. So hopefully he fights soon and then we can box in the maybe May, May time. But if not, I'm not bothered, mate. I'm trying to keep moving forward with my career. And Shane's got big plans for me. He's a beat this fella. Um, he's, on, on, he's no mug. He's an experienced fella. He's tricky. It's going to be a hard night to wear, but come through that. And if you want, we want big fights. We want the likes of Cheeseman, Metcalf winner, Sergio Garcia, the European champion. I want, I want to be pushing forward now. Not like I've been waiting around for Scott for a while to get his shit together, but if he doesn't, I'll just move, I'll just move forward. You mentioned the Cheeseman, Metcalf fight. Just firstly, touch on that. What are your thoughts on, on there about? It's, the, it's a really intriguing fight that it's. Um, I think, I think it's a two clash of styles. I think Cheeseman will try and box, but Metcalf can box a bit himself as he showed against Jason Wilborn. So 
it's a good clash of styles, Dan. I'm, I'm looking forward to that fight, and um, hopefully, I'll fight the winner down the line. Who do you think comes out on top? I don't know. You know, it's like it's a really hard uh, fight to pick. Um, I'm, I'm hoping Metcalf wins. To be fair, he's, he's a scouser, and um, me and Metcalf and Liverpool, the bit of title will be a massive fight. He spoke about it. I speak about it, and that'll be a big fight for our city. And hopefully, um, give you a crowd. Hopefully. As someone I was about to ask you, you know, how much are you missing it yourself now without having fans there? You had the experience of fight camp. This one most probably will be behind closed doors. Not sure yet. Obviously, nothing confirming that. But how much have you missed it? Yeah, I think everyone's a bit sick of just the way life is at the minute. Like, it's fucking, there's not much to do. It's, it's really boring at the minute. Like, my girlfriend's stuck in the house all week when I'm away and she's on her own. And no, she can't come see no one. It's, everyone's a little bit down. I'm just cracking on me, just trading all the time, as I do, but the likes of the fights and the crowds and the fans, they're all missing out and we all want life back to normal. The fight, fight camp wasn't too bad because it was a new experience, but now it's like dragging on a bit now. We're in, <laughs> we're in February now, aren't we? So hopefully this last fight is the last one and moving forward, the likes of Fitzgerald, Metcalf, Cheeseman, they need crowds. That's what we fight for. We're entertainers. We want to fight for the crowd and impress and that's what it's all about. So hopefully... Back soon. And you mentioned some names there. One I want to throw at you is Sam Eggington. Would you have any interest in facing Sam? He's competed for European title previously. He's fought, uh, he's obviously fought Ted Cheeseman. He, he said to me himself, you know, he knows you're looking at the European stage and, and what have you, but would it be a fight you'd be interested in? I don't know. It's like, it's a, I don't really see why I'd want to fight Sam. Like, he's a good fighter, he's a big name. But he's a dollar box cheeseman, he could have built a dollar box Metcalf, could have built a dollar box Sergio Garcia. This fight come up now, maybe Sam would have been a pivot upon for that rather than this fourth fourth year. He's a tricky but opponent and maybe boxing Sam next would have been more ideal for me and then beat Sam pushing on. But after I beat this fella, I'm looking more towards Metcalf, Cheeseman, Fitzgerald, that type. But obviously Sam's a great I, I like Sam, I, I respect the fella. We sparred in the past, he's a top lad and I would fight him happily, but it's not really going to do nothing for me at this stage of my career. Like, Cheeseman's took, just took Sam's rankings. Like, Cheeseman's quite high up at the IBF now, same as Metcalf. They're, they're both really high. So, the winner in that fight will probably be looking towards a world title fight. Maybe saying to me, like, what do you offer? So, it's, it's just the way it goes. We're always trying to push on forward and forward and move forward. So, um, not at the moment, but maybe in the future. It will be a great fight. It'll be a good, good friend, fight friendly styles and also I just want to get your thoughts on a few of the fights obviously you're fighting on the Kelly Avenesian card Josh a former uh, amateur teammate of yours just your thoughts on that bout it's certainly one which has got everybody kind of split on opinion yeah it's one of the fights it's one of the fights too hard I think but early on Kelly will be out boxing will be seen quite quite easy not easy but I think Kelly would win the rounds early on so the middle rounds will be a lot closer and I think towards the end it's going to favour the Russian so it's a good, it's a good fight, Dad, and I, I think it could go both ways. It's going to be really interesting that fight. Again, just kind of, how do you think it plays out? Who would you slightly favour, or do you edge towards? I think he seems the favourite, and he, he should be because he's got the experience. He's been knocking kids out really like, recently, and um, he's got, he's a more experienced fighter. Like Kelly's unproven at this level. It's a it's a high level. He boxed them. Um, that fellow he drew with, that fellow was a good fighter. He boxed Kavilowski, got a draw. So that, that, was a, that was a good result for Kelly. You know, he got a draw. He was a high level fighter. So respect him for taking that fight. But I just think he seems a lot more dangerous than, than that kid was. Should we get your thoughts as well on something away from what well, wasn't a fight? Obviously, last week we saw that Sergei Kovalev had a positive VADA test. Just your thoughts on it? I'm just a bit sick of it all, mate, to be honest. Like, I was actually talking to Shane about, the, about it in the gym, saying, like, I, for example, me, I, I just train my ass off. I live down here by myself. I'm eating fruit and veg and train my ass off. And then you get these little cheating fuckers who want to get a little, a little edge. And it's the, at the highest level in boxing, these little 1% make the difference. So someone wants to cheat, get away with it, beat someone like myself. It's, it's not on, is it, mate? Like, it's, it's like more harsh with the sentences, like three or four year bans, and they, they'll soon stop. But when they're getting these little slaps on the wrist, these little six month bans and year bans, they're not that bothered. You try and risk it and cover it up but um, it's just uh, I can't stand it it, doesn't, it probably pisses me off badly I, I actually tweeted saying you're cheating cunt because 
it's just, it's just custom made. I know he's lost a few fights recently, but so he thinks, oh, I can I can cheat now because I'm losing fights. It's it's not it's not on. I'm, I'm really. What does boxing have to do, Anthony, to to effectively overcome this problem or to put what what punishments in place? You know, what do you feel that boxing needs to do to handle it all better? As an amateur, I got tested all the time. I'd be, I'd be sitting there in the flat with the lads. I'm, bear in mind, we were amateur boxers. The door would be knocking. You get people coming in, testing us, blood test, urine test. As a pro, I don't, I don't get tested, mate. I don't. So I see why these pros, they, they do it and get away with it. I'm thinking, oh, fucking hell. I'm in, I'm in loads of money, yeah, I'm cheating. I feel great. And then eventually you get to the world level and you get, you get caught. But with that stage, the main earth, you probably think, fuck it. I'm a main, I'm a main earth, I was asked. Where like as an amateur mate, they were on your case constantly. These Olympic star drug testing. So maybe that comes to the pros where you're getting these random tests with the Sean get out. You, you will be a bit more wary about taking drugs because you think, can I, I get if I get caught yeah, three or four year sentence. My name's getting dragged through death. You might think twice, but while it's the way it is and it's so like laid back and no one's getting tested and that, it's gonna carry on. I just want to quickly move back to a couple of possible fights or certainly ones which were mentioned. Last week, Chris Eubank Jr. said that he'd be happy to face one of Liam Williams or Cal Brook as a warm-up fight. What would be your thoughts if Chris Eubank Jr. faced Liam Williams or Cal Brook? Do you see either of those as a warm-up fight, as he put it? I think I think he's a bit big for Cal Brook. I don't know. I just feel like at this stage of Cal's career, he's, he's a welterweight. I don't think he's what he once was. And like, I'm a massive fan of Cal. I've watched him my whole life and a massive respect to respect the fella. But I would want to see him fight Eubank because Eubank's a, a big, strong fella. Let his hands go. We'll be on Keller's case where Liam Williams is, is a big, strong middleweight himself and got the skills. And I think Liam could outbox Eubank, but still a hard fight for Liam. That like it's a really I, I, I rate Eubank. I think Eubank's a really tough fight, tough fighter. He's lost the likes of Groves and Bedo Saunders, who are great boxers and moving the feet. But the likes of Liam, he won't have a bit of a war with him. It'd be a hard fight. It'd be a hard night to wear. But I think Liam could beat him. So. I'd be happy to watch the Liam Williams, but I don't know if Kel's a, a Welser way. I'd like him to stay at Welser, maybe light middle, but not middle. And Eubank's a big lad as well. But that way, he's boxing that super middle and he's holding his own there. Uh, Liam Smith for Jesse Vargas. It seems to be a thought which is kind of being discussed behind the scenes. Your thoughts if that one was to go ahead, Fowler? I think Liam Smith's a good solid fighter. I think he underrated Liam Smith. I, I rate him high. I think he's a really good fighter. And I think Vargas is a He's come up from like a light ball threat. I actually haven't seen much of Vargas, to be honest. I know he's in, um, he's through with Brona. He threw one of his fights and I was there in Chicago. And I, he likes a bit of a war, but Liam is the bigger man. I think Liam could be a bit um, a bit cute for him and potentially beat him. Probably big points, maybe. Right. And the final one I just want to touch on, um, your camp mate, Luke Campbell, fought right at the beginning of this year. We haven't had a chance, to, well, using you with the channel to speak about it as of yet. Just reflecting on that fight, what did you make of it? He's lost to Ryan Garcia. You know what? I was really surprised, mate. I was really, I was gutted for him. I couldn't even see that night. I was really, I was gutted for the guy, mate. And um, he put a lot into that camp and he really wanted to win. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest, mate, that Garcia is special. I didn't. I mean, that's how good he was. Like Luke's a quality fighter, mate, and he done he done a job on Luke. Like he was really impressive. He he got knocked down with a heavy knockdown and was up in two seconds, which is <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? I can, I can recover so fast. But um, Garcia, I think he's really special. Against even against like the likes of um, Javante Davis, I give, I give him a chance. He's that good, and he's a big lad for the weight as well. And he he hits hard, he's really fast. I, I rate the kid really high, and um, well done to him. All right, and it's getting on a bit now. I'm going to leave you to enjoy the rest of your evening. I appreciate you giving me some time, though. I'll keep in touch and I'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. In a bit, mate. See you soon.